So today, we'll be revealing the book, The Unexpected Joy at Dawn, by Alex Agie Aguirre. But before then, I would love to give my international and local students a little advice. Please do well to get this book, Unexpected Joy at Dawn, by Alex Agie Aguirre. It's for a reason. We may not be able to give you detailed understanding or the detailed summary of everything entails in that book. But then, when you read the book for yourself, you find out some hidden treasures. Yeah. So with this said, let us give a little biography on the novelist Alex Agie Aguirre. The novelist Alex Aguirre was born in Adaborebe in the eastern part of Ghana. He was trained in the University of Ghana, Legon. He doubles as a literary scholar and a legal practitioner who has written many poems since 1979. As a prolific writer, he has published many poetic works such as Ancestral Faces, Passover, The Dead Call, amongst others. His two collections in the poetry or in the poetry fetched him an award from Ghana Association of Writers in the year 1982. He has also won a Valco Award of Literature in 1982. But Unexpected Joy at Dawn marks his second extensive fictional work, which has received commendation at the 2005 Commonwealth Writers' Prize. So with this said about the author Alex Agiye Agiriye, let me give us a little plot summary on the book. Note you all to get the book, because what I'll be giving is a tip of an iceberg to what the book entails. So with this, let's delve into the plot summary. The Unexpected Joy at Dawn, as a fictional Ghanaian historical document, captures the story of two siblings in the person of Ni and Mama Orojo. The story was told during the period where Ghanaian people were deported from Nigeria in 1983 under Shegu Shagari government. Ni, one of the central characters who happens to have a dual parentage by being a Nigerian by blood and a Ghana by birth, is abandoned by his parents in Ghana. Okay, so wait, at this point, I will want us to digress a bit. We need an additional knowledge, so let's add an additional knowledge to this, to this plot summary. It is expedient to note at this point that in 1969, the Busia's government enacted, which, was, which is the Ghanaian government, enacted a law that all aliens living in Ghana should pack their things and leave. It was a strong enforcement. This includes the Nigerian living in Ghana. Are you seeing that? Then, take note, that happened in 1969. Then, in 1983, the Shagari government in Nigeria enacted a law that all aliens living in Nigeria should leave. Are you seeing it? So, including the Ghana, that was when Ghana must go. That was the Ghana must go code, that was where it came about. So it was in Shagari's government in 1983 that Ghana and other aliens living in Nigeria were asked to go. But it was in 1969, aliens living in Ghana, including Nigeria, were asked to leave Ghana. It was a very strong one. Are you seeing it? When military kept intact to make sure that these aliens leave these individual countries. So it was at this period, the novelist or the author pictured his story or his fiction. i seen it. So let's continue with the book itself. So, with the Alien Compliance Order of 1969 enacted by the Ghanaian government, his parents made a strenuous, torturous journey to Nigeria. With his own biological parents going back to Nigeria, Ni was left alone with his grandmother in Ghana, and his name was quickly changed to Ni to adopt the Ghanaian name itself. So are we saying this? So it's, let's let's go further. After Ni lived in Ghana for 14 years, he experienced an untold hardship. 
His situation was so bad that he begins to live in a slumpy environment even after working as an assistant bank manager. So, he has to engage in multiple jobs when he was finally ruined economically. Knees overtaken by unforeseen challenges given by his death of his wife, who he could not even bury when she died. His problem is compounded by the market woman who are chasing him around for an alleged fraud which he didn't commit. Because of these problems, he decided to go back to Nigeria to search for his root or origin. He is overwhelmed with the thought of being identified as an alien due to the escalating tension in Ghana against Nigeria, resulting from the sufferings of Ghanas in Nigeria. Are you seeing that? So, he wants to go back, but he's scared of being identified as a Nigerian, bearing a Ghana name. Are you seeing it? Hmm. Having succeeded in, the, in, the, in his dangerous journey to Nigeria, filled with deaths, gunpoint, robbery, bribery, amongst other hazards, Ni comes to understand that even his blackness, his tribal marks, and even his name could not make him a Nigerian. Remember that Ni is actually a Nigerian, born and raised in Ghana, so he looks like a Ghanaian. But he had a Nigerian tribal mark. So, when finally he got to the Nigerian borders, he was asked to speak Nigerian fluently and also dressed like them, which seems impossible for him. Yes, he could not speak any Nigerian language. So, definitely, the Nigerian immigrant or the Nigerian police people wouldn't have allowed him coming to Nigeria even after escaping from um, Ghana. Not minding all his pretenses and claims as a Nigeria, they thought he was lying. Ni is exposed as he is called Omo Ghana everywhere he goes. At a stage, Ni is moved from being a slave in someone's cassava farm to living in a slump. Furthermore, he leaves the deportation camp and begins to work as a building laborer. It is at this junction that he is tagged an armed robber before his fate blesses his day. That's on the part of me. Are you seeing it? Are you seeing his suffering? After denying the fact that he's a Nigerian because he could not speak the language fluently, they didn't allow him coming to Nigerian borders. They had to make him or deploy him to a camp. From there, he became. He started working in a cassava farm. From there, he started doing so many odd jobs before he was actually declared an armed robber. He was tagged an armed robber. He was living in fear, even as a Nigerian that he was. I see the height of discrimination for aliens then. So let's talk about the part of Mama Orojo. Mama Orojo, niece sister, on the other hand, returned to Ghana searching for her only brother, not knowing that Ni is already in Nigeria searching for his root or origin. It is in this course of search for Ni that Mama Orojo falls in love with a gold dealer who is a customer to expense back when Ni had worked as an assistant bank manager. Remember that Ni worked as an assistant manager while he was in Ghana and he was also doing other jobs due to the money was not enough. Are you seeing it? Together with Joy or Joe Boye, that is Mama Orojo's lover, they started searching for Ni in Ghana. Remember, Ni is already in Nigeria. They realized the complications of the problems they have at hand, which extended to the burial of Ni's wife. We should note at this point that during his hardship in Ghana, he lost his wife. His wife died and he didn't have money to bury her. So instead, he dropped her in the mortuary and started coming back to Nigeria. So upon Mama Orojo's and Joe Boye's search in Ghana, they realized that he didn't bury his wife and they had to help him bury his wife while they were still searching for me in Ghana. We should also know that at this point, that Ni, the um, wife's or Ni's wife's name was actually Massa. Are you saying that? The resolution of this plot 
Are you saying it? Draws with two siblings meeting again under a very strange circumstance after he had been absconded from a, from a deportation camp and was hiding inside an uncompleted building. Ni and his friend, Aaron Suru by name. Ni and his friend, Aaron Suru, that's been all, like, they've been together all through the journey from Ghana to Nigeria. I said that. So, at this point, when Mama Orojo and Ni finally met, they were with, he was with Aaron Suru in the uncompleted building where people was rushing into the building to ridicule them as anyone would ridicule an armed robber. As people were rushing on them, suddenly, Mama Orojo and Joe, her gold dealer lover, seized Ni after a long period of search for him in Ghana. Ni's problem did not end. Yes, Ni's problem did not end there because during his course of, during the course of his running, running away from the Nigerian immigration officer, when he was asked to prove his citizenship, he lost a lover, Mashak, as well as a friend, Aaron Suru. Aaron Suru died. Mashak, a girl he fell in love with in the deportation camp, also died. So it's a sad story that Nick crossed into Nigerian border, but he lost the ones he loved. Are you saying it? So, with this said, finally we came to the end of the summary, The Unexpected Joy at Dawn by Alex Agie Agri. Please do well to join our in-house competition by clicking on the link below and don't forget to subscribe and hit on the notification bell. You know I love you, right? Stay tuned. Bye!